What's up guys, welcome to Free Dive Passion. Now over the last year and a half, I've gave you guys the fundamentals and principles for how to train responsibly and progress consistently in free diving. But now I want to show you how I apply these principles to my own training in a practical way. I'm just about to embark on a seven week training period. And during this time, I want to give you guys an idea of my ups and downs, the problems that come up, the solutions that I come up with to solve these problems, my decision making process, to give you guys an insight into how you can um, address your own problems when it comes to training and find your own solutions. Right now I'm going to share with you my training plan and I'll show you my first training session which I did earlier today as well. When deciding on a training plan you need to consider two things. One is where am I at now, so what is my starting level. For instance, if you haven't dove in a year, your starting level is going to be shallow because you need to start to build, to build your adaptation to depth. For me, my starting level is quite fine, especially when it comes to adaptation. Um, I've been diving all year, I've been sneaking in some FRCs, I've been lung stretching all year. I'm as flexible as I've ever been in my life. As well as that, although I've been coaching these last few months, I've been able to sneak in in the last few weeks a few like deepish dives, like 60, 65 meters. So I'm basically ready to start my deep diving right away. The second thing to think about is what do I want to get out of this training period? What do you want to achieve? Now for me, what I want and what I expect at the bare minimum is to get comfortable with 80 meters in both constant weight and free immersion. Now my constant weight PB right now is 80, but I haven't had chance to repeat it enough times for it to feel easy, to, for it to be like really a comfortable dive for me. So that's a big priority to me. My free immersion, I haven't really gave any um, attention to in the last few years. So my PB is quite shallow, 65 meters. Um, but like that doesn't really represent what I can do. Um, and I'm sure that I can get up to 80 qu pretty quickly in free immersion. Now, if all my wildest, wildest dreams come true, like my all-time aim is to get to 90 meters in both constant weight and free immersion. Now, whether I can do that on this training period or not, is going to depend how the dives feel as I start to progress in my depth. But a guy can always hope. You might wonder, like, why 90? Why not 100? Well, I first started competitive style free diving here in Dahab. 90, 92 meters is the bottom of the blue hole, so that re will really like mean something to me if I can finally get to the bottom of the blue hole that I first started free diving in. So I'm going to approach it like this. My free immersion is really strong, although I haven't done much deep, purely free immersion diving. My 105 variable, I did come up free immersion, so I know I can pull up from depth in that discipline. Um, it's relaxing for me, it's easy, it's quite fast. So I'm happy to start increasing my depth right away in free immersion. My constant weight on the other hand is a bit of a weakness. I still need to perfect my technique and I still need to drill my technique until it becomes really automated, really easy. So the way I'm gonna approach my diving is this. I'm gonna do a deep dive and free immersion each day. After my deep free immersion dive, I'm then gonna do constant weight drills probably dives to about 40 meters, two, maybe three dives, focusing on technique, fine tuning, what needs to be fixed, getting plenty of videos, reviewing the videos and seeing what I need to do. I'm going to dive two days in a row, followed by one rest day. I'm planning on repeating each depth two times and then adding two and a half meters for the next two day period. I imagine before long, my dives are gonna be too deep to repeat two days in a row one after the other so when that problem arises I'll find a new solution and I'll adapt my training plan accordingly. Seven weeks is a really long time to train, too long to train right the way through so I'm gonna split my training into two three week chunks with a five to seven days rest in between each chunk. The first period will be focused on free immersion, the second period will be focused on constant weight. Now without any further ado, let's talk about my first session. Now funnily enough, this is the first session, um, but it's actually going to be a PB. You know, I was lucky enough to get a few dives in last week. I did a 65 meter, which was my PB before. 
Um, but I was pretty confident that I could do 70 going off my past dives and just the way I'm feeling right now. That 65 meter PB has not represented my true level as a freediver for quite a while, so it's about time to do something about it. And over these next three weeks, I should get to see what I'm really capable of. The descent went very nice. No equalization problems, no substantial pressure in the chest. And the free fall was beautiful and relaxing, so that's really positive for the future. The way up also went fine. Um, I started to get the first sort of inkling of the edge to breathe on the last part of the ascent, but it was really no problem at all. I like my free immersion dives to be fast, and if you check out the dive time from this dive, you'll see it's about one meter a second, which is old school monofin speed. So I'm happy with that, and there's not much to change there. Then, after surface intervals and safety and my training partners, I'll move on to my technique training. For anybody who is interested in developing their technique, you've got to get people to video you. Now first I'm going to run through my dive without stopping. Then afterwards I'm going to break down the dive and see what I can work on in the future to improve my technique. First we can see there's not much movement in my arms and upper torso, most of it's coming from my lower torso, hips and legs, so that's good. The next thing to notice is how far back my hips come on the forward kick. As you can see it's basically in line with my body. Now if you're going to emulate somebody it might as well be the best, so let's take a look at how Alexei and Dave Mullins kick. As you can see on Alexei's forward kick his hips do come further back than mine, which also allows the fin to move further forward. And similar with Dave Mullins. So for sure that's something that I should work on in my next session. The next thing I wanted to check on was my knee bend. And as you can see here my knee bend is only slight. And that's really workable. I'm happy with that. Finally I want to make sure I'm getting power on the back kick. And as you can see here due to the bend in the fin. I'm getting plenty of power on the back kick. So for my next session my main focus is going to be bringing the hips further back on the forward kick. Now you can't take everything too seriously when you're in the water. So my training partner Nathan decided to have a shot at my old Armstrong weight world record. As you can see it ain't pretty, but the motherfucker did it. He beat my world record. He's got the new world record in Armstrong weight, 18 meters. If there's anybody out there who thinks they're hard enough to beat it, then you're welcome to take a shot, send me a video and I'll give you a shout out in my next video. say that I'm not sponsored, I'm not from a rich family. The money that allows me to train during this period has came from the people that I've coached over the last year. So I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that's came out to Dahab to get coaching with me and I hope to see you all again soon. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, there's plenty more coming out soon and until next time take it easy and dive safe.